Hey, welcome to Hypo Brew. I'm Tom Brennan. Today I'm going to be going over the Chapman Universal Fermenter and the story about how I did a partial mash beer and how easy it was to keg on this. It's also a review video as well as I'll go through the brew day as well, which is where I brewed this uh, stout. And you know what first has to happen, right? The sky. <laughs> First one I would talk to you about is uh, how I picked up the the fermenter. I you know, I saw it online. the The price point was great. Uh, I used it one time, and I emailed uh, Steve uh, Chabin, the guy who runs the company. I said, "Listen, this is not something I normally do, and I'm sure you get more complaints than you do compliments." But I said, "This is a fantastic fermenter. It works great." He reached back out to me. He said, "Hey, would you want to do a review video of um, of the fermenter?" I said, "Sure." And, and here we are today, right? So uh, I'm gonna go back to brew day right now. We're gonna take a look at how I did the partial mash beer uh, and how easy it was. You may see me cut back and forth because um, I may have to do an edit here and there. That's kind of what we call it in the, in the biz. <laughs> like I'm really in the business, right? Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy the video from at least this point on and um, we may pop back. If not, here's the brew day. And remember what I said about how we'd pop back? Well, I'm going to do that right now. We're going to first show you, or I'm going to show you, not we. I'm the Hypo Brew team. <laughs> we, have a whole, we have a whole crew. You can't see them. Uh, how the assembly of, the, of it happens, how the assembly of the unit happens. Uh, because it can be a little confusing. And quite frankly, when I looked at the video on the website, I had to pause it to kind of do that kind of thing. So that's why I'm going to go into detail about how the uh, the universal fermenter kind of um, gets put together. So here we go. Before we get to uh, brewing with the pot, I want to show you just a couple of things that helped me decide to get the version of the pot that I decided to get, namely uh, the ported version of the pot. It makes it really, really easy for packaging purposes to get this. So what I wanted to show you was what comes with the unit and what you could attach to the product too. Uh, first thing, and I want to make sure <laughs> on their on Chapman's website and on even Amazon, they show that you will get a three uh, th a three piece ball valve. What a three piece ball valve is essentially, it gives you the ability to take off this piece here, this piece here, and that leaves a third piece, and it makes it for super easy cleaning. You just unscrew it here. I'm not going to do this here, but that's essentially what a three piece ball valve is, right? Uh, and this is half inch. The first time I ordered the product, came in the mail, very hastily wrapped. And actually, this, the unit was wrapped in, a, uh, or the, the valve, I should say, was uh, wrapped in a fast food wrapper, which is really pretty bad. And it was a two-piece ball valve. And Chapman explicitly states on their website, and even on the product listing on Amazon, that it is a three-piece ball valve. So please make sure you get a three-piece ball valve. So you've got that. <clears throat> you also have a locking nut a silicone ring, and then a washer. What I'm gonna do, and, and so what happens is that this goes into the inside of the kettle, and then this goes on the outside of the kettle. Uh, what I'm gonna do first is show you how to uh, put this together using my, <laughs> this is the wall of the kettle, everybody. What you're gonna do um, first is, um, Okay, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, you just saw the jump cut there. I just realized <laughs> that I, when I reassembled this, I assembled it the wrong way. So this is the wall of the kettle, right? <laughs> right. And how do you turn the ball valve on? You turn it this way. Oh wait, no you can't because I put it r the wrong way. So I guess I'm gonna have to take this apart and then you're gonna see another jump cut and you're gonna see the, uh, the valve here turned the right way. So just hang on one minute. Okay, folks, we're back. <laughs> this way, putting it properly. All right, so where was I? Oh, yes, um, before we get to assembling it into the, uh, how we're going to put it into the pot, I want to show you 
uh, what you could do with the half inch uh, opening that's here. What I what I have done is I, I just picked up a, a cam lock, a male cam lock, and you just toss that on there. So this way when I'm packaging, and I'll, I'll show you this later on in the video, but when you're packaging, you, I put my cam lock on here like this, and just put it right into my keg. If you don't have any cam lock disconnects like I do on my setup, what you could do is you could just take a barb here and you could um, toss it in there like that, put your hose in, and then you can put that into your bottling bucket or into your keg if you have a small vinyl hose. And you can get these barbs in, in various sizes, and even the cam locks. And it doesn't really matter. These are just two instances of what you can do. And that's what makes this great is it's so universal. You can pretty much get any kind of connection you want into it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to uh, put this into this uh, this your kettle wall here. There is a video that they do have on Chapman's website. I believe it's on Chapman's website on how to uh, attach this. I'm just going to give you a quick uh, tutorial. So what I do is you take the the stainless steel valve or the um, washer here. You toss that on there, and then so what is, this is going to represent is the outside of the wall, the the the, the valve here. Attach that, and then you could slap on your uh, o-ring here silicone o-ring which you can get replacements for just throw that in there like that okay and then when you're putting the washer on if you notice here this side of the washer has a little bit of an indent in it where that one does not this is spaced here for your silicone o-ring so you're just going to toss that in there and uh, it doesn't have to be super super tight but you just want to make sure that it's tight enough to hold the seal what i also do before I use this is I'll throw enough water in to fill up the kettle to get it over to get it over the uh, ring here to make sure that I don't have any leaks and once I know I don't have any leaks then I'm good to go I usually keep this disassembled until I want to use it uh, because it just makes it easier to stack the product uh, together uh, and also when I take this apart and clean I just kind of do a quick rinse of it and wash and things like that But stainless steel to last forever, but again make sure that you get a three-piece wall valve if you do wind up buying this And also don't forget when you're picking it up to purchase whatever you're going to use for your outlet What I will do in a few moments when I turn the camera off I'm going to attach this cam lock here to here so this way I've got it all set for brew day because I don't want to when I'm packaging Sit here and start screwing around with this because I don't want to if I don't want to um, alter what I've got going on inside here. I don't want to mess around with the, you know, perhaps this can get loose or something like that. Leave well enough alone. Put that on there on brew day and you're all set. So that's how you would assemble this. And make sure when you're reassembling this after cleaning that you make sure that the lever goes on the right side. Very, very important, especially when you're shooting a video. Do a quick visual tour. Uh, so there we have the ported uh, portion of the pot. Inside the pot, if you notice here, you've got six what look like tack wells of some type. That's actually for the handle, which makes it very, very easy for carrying. There's two handles, one on this side, one on the other. Then if you notice, you've got the clamps here, which will, uh, for your lid, you can toss your lid on there. It's a little hard to do with one hand, but <laughs> so you put the lid on, or clamp that down. The lid itself has got a ported hole here for a bung. It does come with a bung. I don't know what size it is, but you could look it up. Taking a look at the underside of the very dirty lid, which I obviously didn't clean well enough. We have a, uh, a gasket here, a silicone gasket, which is replaceable around the entirety of the pot itself. And then we also have uh, the parts in the assembly for the spigot. I'm going to go ahead and attach the spigot now because, and the, um, and the port, I don't need to worry about sanitizing it because I'm going to be brewing with this. And because of that, the heat from the wort will sanitize whatever I have inside of here. So I think I'm all set. So this beer here is a, uh, it's a stout, it's a chocolate milk, chocolate mint stout. Um, I got it for Christmas. My wife picked it up for me and I, I figured, you know what? I want to get a, a partial mash done, especially in the winter time. You don't really want to hassle so much. Um, and it just so happened when Steve and I were chatting online, I said, I have a partial mash kit. As a matter of fact, just kind of waiting to get ready to get done. And so I just wanted to sh I'll kind of show you the process behind how I got everything going, but I really want to tell you how quick the brew day was. I, I have it written somewhere in my notes here, and I'll get to it in a minute. But I mean, we're talking, you know, it was like three hours tops from the point when I put the water in the fermenter to when I got the boil going. 
uh, till I was done. It was really, really pretty quick. So let's go on to that brew day. Uh, if you're, if time is a uh, time is of the essence, you may want to pick up something like this, this Chapman fermenter, or I really highly recommend it too. If you want to do a partial mash, and this beer, this tastes, it's a fine beer. Let me tell you. Uh, and I and I got it all done in, in three hours. It was really pretty incredible. So now let's go to brew day and see how that worked out. All right. I'm outside now taking a look at uh, the setup, propane tank. Now you can do this kind of stuff inside your house too, but it's just a setup I have to uh, make things quicker and also to keep it outside. People in the house don't like the smell of me brewing beer and that's too bad. But I do get to get this done a lot quicker with the propane uh, burner. I have a video for this too if you wanna check it out. What the other thing I wanna talk about too, uh, here's the lid, I have it on there right now. I will take it off eventually. What I do want to talk about right now is that I'm using a recipe that I got for Christmas. So I'm going to be following that recipe 100% uh, to the T. If I were to do it uh, myself, I would probably not follow the recipe if it were my own, but I want to make sure I've got this recipe down pat. The recipe doesn't call for a full boil. It calls for uh, two and a half gallons. So there's got about two and a half gallons of water in there. Then what it calls for, it calls for the grain uh, bag with the steeping grains in it to be put in there and then slowly brought up to about 150 to 160 degrees. If you can't tell already, I'm outside. <laughs> so I'm gonna probably get up to 160 and then just let, let, let it chill out for the appropriate time. I think it's at 20 minutes, I'll have to read it again. Uh, just because it's outside and it may cool down a little bit. I'm gonna drop the bag in, turn the burner on and get moving on this brew day. I've only had the steaming grains in here for a couple minutes and already it's looking pretty dark, right? Probably only up to about 90 degrees or something like that. So I still have some time. Steaming grains, uh, according to the recipe, 20 minutes in, let it rest for 20 minutes, and uh, that's it. Pull it out and strain it and you're good to go. This will make things a lot easier doing a what's called a partial boil. And what happens at the end of the partial boil is you add cool water to the fermenter afterwards. This pot, uh, seven it's about seven gallons total, maybe a little bit more, I have to look. You can do a full boil in it, but if you're, this this kind of a pot is something that you wanna use, um, if you wanna use it for one thing, you wanna boil in it, you wanna ferment it, the whole nine yards. This is great for doing partial boils too, because then you don't have to worry about it getting a larger pot, you don't have to worry about getting a mash on if you want to do full boil it, it takes all that away so i think that having something like this and doing a partial boil is great because you have one vessel that does it all and that's what i'm going to you know demonstrate that for you today funny enough i've never done a partial boil before or a half boil and add the water afterwards we're going to do a, a quick cut in now the one thing that's great about the fermenter and especially with the port in the front is that when I put in the LME, you know, when you when you do an extract batch, there's that when you put LME in there, it's still kind of sticky and things like that. So what I did was I just kind of opened the port up and I swirled around the container uh, with the spatula that I had, and it was came out so much easier. And I know that's always a hassle when I do um, extract beers is kind of getting that LME out. The one thing I do not recommend for science, I'll tell you that I did this just to make sure. It, it wasn't right to do, but do not do this at home, folks. Don't put the lid on and shake it, because then it'll blow up on you. Believe me, it's, it's not fun. <laughs> I threw the wort chiller into some sanitizer and then a flame out. I threw the wort chiller in there. I want to thank Nick, a uh, buddy of mine from the Monmouth County Homebrewers Club for letting me borrow the wort chiller for the day. Thank you, Nick. Threw some tin foil on top of the pot, sanitized tin foil with the uh, cover. And again, it, it could be aluminum foil, depending on what century you were born in. I want to take a gravity reading too, although it's an extract bag, I just extract a batch. I still want to see what, uh, where we're at. So what I did was took a ball jar, I fill, uh, put it right down to the bottom of the spigot there, filled it up, and when I got to full volume, I threw some water in there. 
and I can take a gravity reading. I'm going to wait for this to sit down a little bit or uh, to cool down a little bit. Not sit down. That's what I'm doing right now. We're going to let it cool down for a little bit and then take a hydrometer reading. But the spigot, yet again, comes to the rescue. So on keg day, it was really pretty easy to do. All I did was take out the, uh, the Chapman fermenter out of my chest freezer. You may notice that my fridge is gone that I had in one or two of my videos. And that's because uh, somebody uh, was drilling a hole in the side of the fridge for something and then accidentally hit the Freon line and the Freon went all over the place. But, you know, that somebody is taken care of. Don't worry about it. So now I have a new chest freezer. Uh, <laughs> all I did was I brought in the, the fermenter uh, inside, uh, used the uh, port in the front to take a gravity reading, reading, which was really pretty simple to do. Uh, so I had, you know, not, not a whole lot of... of um, of extra beer kind of laying around I went all right into the keg kegging is super easy I'm you know even if you were to do a bottling system as well because really all you have to do is just hook up a tube and in and my point what I did was I had um, a cam lock on there um, put the put the hose right in the in the keg or in you know, or a bottle bucket if you want to uh, and just open the valve up and it just comes right out and you don't have to worry about, you know, siphoning, which was really always a pain for me, especially when I have an auto siphon and, you know, you get some extra oxygen in there when you see those bubbles. That's something you don't want to have in your beer. So in this case, I just kind of opened up the valve and there it went. All right. So I want to, um, you know, you've kind of been seeing how I've kind of gone through the process of the Chapman Universal Fermenter. I want to highly recommend this. If you have some extra money laying around, you're able to spend this kind of money on either a fermenter or an, an all-in-one system like I did with, with this stout here, highly recommend it. If you're going to go with this, which I recommend you do, get it with the port. The port is a game changer on so many different levels, which I've already shown you already from uh, using the, getting the partial or the, um, uh, the LME out of the container and not shaking it uh, to, uh, to a packaging day. It's a total, total game changer. Even if you want to take gravity readings, you don't have to take out the top of the fermenter. All you got to do is go to the port and, you know, kind of do a little jiggle like that, you know, and you're fine. Um, <laughs> I said before earlier in the video, it was, a, it was about a three-hour brew day. I looked it up. I'm looking at my notes right here. A two-hour, two-hour brew day. Incredible. Because I didn't really have to clean anything up because it was all right there in the fermenter, which is great. Uh, and again, you know, the, the only thing I really had to clean was my the word chiller that I that I borrowed from a, from a buddy of mine, Nick. Uh, so, yeah, I... I uh, would highly recommend that you add this if you have the extra cash uh, to go with either the seven gallon like I have here um, or if you want to go full bore and do full boils you can do all grain if you want to you can pick up the 14 gallon uh, version that they have of this as well I'm fermenting in this and you know when I do do a, I, an extract batch I'm definitely going to do a partial boil in this thing because it is so much faster so much easier for cleanup I highly recommend that I think did I, how many times did I say that did we do zero counter I don't know if I, I don't know why I'm moving it up to figure out the counter. But anyway, thanks for sticking around. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, which is somewhere floating around there in, in uh, internet land and YouTube land. Uh, so again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. You know, you kind of take a look at how the, the inner workings of how to do something with uh, this Chapman Universal Fermenter. And I will talk to you at some point soon. By the way, if you want to put in the comments, if you want me to show you anything, um, to do even if it's something you've never seen on the channel before i'll try it why not and i'll give you a review of it and i'll you know i'll, I'll show you the ins and the outs and all the flubs along with it um you'll have to google flubs you'll you it's safe don't worry it's it's safe kids so anyway thanks again for watching make sure to subscribe add any comments down below if you want to uh, i will respond to them at some point i promise and you guys have a great day and uh, cheers